everybody. Welcome back once again to the Popper Premier League Week 6. This is our final game, uh, or our final round of, like, the Swiss part of all the round robin nonsense. It's so, <laughs> I, I, I'm excited. I can't wait. Next week starts our playoffs. Yeah, so this is what the situation is right now. We have one player who's automatically going to the finals right now, and that is Adam. Congratulations. Uh, He is a win clear of everyone uh, with five wins. If he wins again, that's great. Doesn't do anything for him. Except knock Michael out of the playoffs, which... that out but right now we have yeah. two astrolabe decks squaring off we have encore combo the poor man's breakfast whatever you want to call it versus four color control kendra who do you like in this matchup um it's so hard to say um i on one hand i like my, my gut instinct is to go for michael mm-hmm. because of all his removal all the counter magic and everything the way that's the interact and handle with a lot of what Adam's doing. The problem is though, if Adam even sticks that combo, like if if he just sticks the two creatures together, Michael's going to have a really tough time getting rid of those. If he's able to even at all, Michael has one way to take care of creatures that is not damage based in his main deck. And that is journey to nowhere. Yeah. Um, so this is what I find interesting. I I think Adam's advantaged. I think he's a leaner deck. I think he has a quick kill, and he can get under the ephemerate lock. The big thing is going to be game two and three, what Standard Bearer does. Because Standard Bearer shuts down... uh, What's that card? Inside Out shuts down Treefolk Umbra and kind of forces Adam to play a fair game. That being said, Michael only has one copy in his sideboard. So this is going to be a really interesting matchup. I'm interested to see the interplay. Um, I think Michael thinks it's either even or like a 55, 45 in one direction. I think it's, if it is, I think Adam's advantaged, you know, Adam has not dropped a match. He's dropped only a handful of games and you know, he's a heater. Michael says he never wants to face condescend, but that's what we have right now. We have lamp a lot and condescend. Yep. And they are too. You might not know them. You know, you may not know their faces quite as well. You may not know them, but if you follow Popper at all, and you, follow, you follow like magic. the challenges, you follow. Like, yeah, but Adam um, Yurchek, I believe, has a U.S. Nationals team credit yeah. to his name. Michael Bunda made top eight Mythic Championship one in Cleveland. I mean, these are two very accomplished players, both Absolutely. on Magic Online in Popper, but also just they're good Magic players. Right. So. Um, and what I was getting at with that is like with um, a lot of you know, there's a lot of popper players who maybe don't follow the you know world like the pro scene the world scene so may not recognize these players for being the you know the pros that they are with the success that they are or that they have so but they do recognize their usernames from like challenges and such yeah. and now they get to actually see them in person see that they are how, as accomplished as they really are and see them face off, which it sounds like we're about to do right now. So we let's got... go down to the match. Heck yeah, let's do it. Awesome. So we got Michael Bond and Adam Yurchek. I'm just waiting for them to get started, firing up these initial starting hands. Hmm. Well, <laughs> Adam's got a loaded hand right there. He does, but... Nomad's Encore is perfectly snipable by Spellstarter Sprite. So this is going to be, it's going to matter who's on the play. That's what's really going to come, what it's going to come. And Adam is on the play. So he might be able to stick that Nomad before Spellstarter comes down. Yeah. And there is a counter spell there as well. 
Yes, but Michael does not have the natural blue blue. He has Ash Barons, but... Not yet, at least. No, not <laughs> yet. No, nope, and he drew a point. Yeah, um, so let's see. Michael, you know, both players have a snow-covered plains. Adam is being patient with his fetch land, looking like he's trying to use that brainstorm as a way to bait it out. Mm -hmm. So Michael's going for the brainstorm on Adam's end step. There's a red card in Michael's hand. It is red? Okay. Yeah. Michael looks like he's putting back this is spread and dispel. So those are two really good keeps. So it looks like he's putting back Ash Barons and Pulse, Pulse and Rasa. Rasa. Okay. With Pulse so, being on the bottom, which makes sense considering how Michael's hand looks. Yeah. So he draws the Ash Barons, has Pulse next draw, probably will cycle it away. And the question is, what does Adam do? Adam, again, patient, plays out another fetch land. Looks like Adam's trying to set up a turn where he deploys all his threats at once. Yep. Michael goes, fetches a mountain for an astrolabe. I think, you know, astrolabe is a pretty free play here. Absolutely. With two with three pieces of counter magic in hand. And we're just a short t- We're not that far away from Michael setting up the Archaeomancer Ephemerate lock. What Adam really wants to see here is a... He really wants to see a uh, dispel. Absolutely. Adam firing off this brainstorm. Yeah. Which spell again? <laughs> Adam wants to see dispel. Michael, uh, but he's firing off a brainstorm. And the question is, will Michael counter? Michael is thinking about it. And it looks like uh, he has let the brainstorm resolve. Adam puts back a redundant copy of Shadow Rift, it looks like, and a redundant fetch land. No, just he put away both of the lands. Both the lands looks like he's going to shuffle at least one of them away, if not both. Well, obviously, if he shuffles, I meant two fetches. <laughs> it's late. I'm sorry. It is very late, in fact. It is uh, about 12.20 uh, in the morning where we are right now. So <laughs> please bear with so, us if we're a little bit out of it. <laughs> Adam with a redundant copy of uh, Daru Spiritualist, but he goes for Ponder. Yeah, we're trying to see what Michael, he's doing. Michael definitely playing his counters quite patiently. From what I understood, uh, going back and looking at some of the you know chats after the fact with our game, uh, looked like he was just holding that, holding up a counter spell very he, uh, or like for a very very long time against me, which I was like very you know that's I was like holding a rolling thunder very cautiously against him. So uh, for him to just like you know be he's very patient with these counter spells and with his counter magic uh so it's definitely gonna put up a heck of a fight against uh all of adam's weaponry here so here's something interesting first of all michael had that counter spell in the opener against you he he had basically the entire game um adam has redundant pieces he has two copies of the combo basically in his hand with a dispel backup michael has archaeomancer with ephemery so there it is. All right, let's go. Okay, Adam is cycling Shadow Rift on the Spell Starter Sprite. Sorry about that. We are back. We had a small technical difficulty. Um, 
this is real. This really looks like Adam is digging for mana. The preordain is yeah. a pretty good card to dig for, but I think it might run into that ephemerate. Yeah, and there's a brainstorm too. Yeah, that's just everything's not nothing's really coming up right here for uh, Adam so far. It, it, it but, feels like the fact that Michael had a spell starter sprite kind of changed the entire texture of this game early. Absolutely. And then it was the, the spell starter sprite with ephemerate, and then you also get the uh, archaeomancer with the ephemerate as well. So it's just, ephemerate's everywhere. It's quite a good card. But again, Adam is not under a ton of pressure. What he, he, he has to expect that there is an ephemerate in his future, uh, or rather a counter spell in this feature at this point. Mm-hmm. But again, with two copies of the combo in hand, I, I think he's in decent shape. It's just a matter of how good of a shape can he be in. Uh, Adam picking up, sorry, Michael picking up the planes, that basically represents ephemerate, right? Yeah, for sure. Adam, no fear plays into it picks up a second copy of Dispel. That is pretty important here. Mm-hmm. Getting, losing the Strands, which is pretty smart here. There's not really much that Prismatic Strands is going to do in this particular matchup. So and what's the be... second card you put back? Is it a Nomad? It is a redundant copy of the Spiritualist. That makes sense, because you can get around one copy of the uh, Ephemerate, with, mm-hmm. or one copy of a Counterspell, uh, the Spell Star Sprite, rather, and overload on the uh, end core. And there's an Astrolabe. Adam is leading with the... Uh, no, he's leading with Astrolabe. Is he trying to bait out the Ephemerate? I think he is. I I think Adam might have just nudged ahead just a hair. Not a lot, just a little bit. There's an auger. We'll probably see a ponder come down to. Auger finds... Did Auger do the secret mode of put three cards on the bottom of your library? It sure looks like it. That's exactly what happened. Oh, that is... Do you ponder first? Do you ponder before Augur? Maybe, yeah. Ponder finds a land, and this this game is, like, it's easy to say Michael's advantage just because of the cards in his hand, but Adam has a ton of defensive measures set up. He has... Redundant combo pieces. He has two copies of cheap interaction. Um, at the same point, Michael has much more cheap interaction. So I, I think yeah. if if I had to, you know, nudge the advantage bar as Michael said, I, I would give it to Michael, right? Yeah. And if you actually look at the mana that Michael has laid out, and if you look at the cards in his hand, my, Michael actually can fire off right now on his next turn. Both counter spells, dispel, scred, and ephemerate. So there is a lot going on. There's going to be a lot that Adam has to fight through to get that win. But here he's at least trying to draw something out with, and he's try, he's drawing out a counter spell. So it looks like we might get our first counter war of the night. Heck yeah! Let's Actually, see. I, I want first... I want some good old counter counter fights well it would be actually i think our first counter war of the tournament we haven't had a lot of blue mirror no we really haven't the the variety of this whole league has been absolutely phenomenal i think we've had a grand total of two repeat decks uh two players played elves two players played stompy mm-hmm. oh sorry two players played uh hexproof or boggles yes um, but they were very different builds so adam returned the auger auger resolves is auger going to put three more cards on the bottom of adam's library no nope. found a prismatic strands of all which things. is not what you want no not even a little bit so effectively it put three cards in the bottom 
<laughs> uh, only two cards. One one in the hand. It's a card. <laughs> it's a card that you can discard to Tireless Tribe. So it does count. Yes, if we get to that point. Which, at this point, I honestly don't think we're going to see that. <laughs> so Again, at this point, Adam is still at a pretty robust 12 life. Yep. So now the question is, are we going to see our cam answer? Let's see. Uh, uh, Michael has access to six blue mana. I think you do go for an Archaeomancer here. Yep. Looks like he agrees. Archaeomancer getting back. Scred, pon uh, Preordain, Brainstorm. Scred. And that has to signal to Adam that he does not have a lot of time to win the game. Yep. Uh, that tells me... No matter what, like if Michael's deploying Archaeomancer, that tells me he has the Ephemerate ready to go. So Adam is drawing choice. all the pieces. He just needs the kill. And Adam's going for it. He still doesn't have a way to turn the um to turn it around. So Adam is gonna cast a spell. No, he doesn't. He lets no. the ephemerate resolve. Which I actually like that. Because then he's going to put on the second one. And then um, Michael will try and counter it. There will be a Adam dispel. Will dispel. And then uh, there may be another dispel followed by another dispel. And then uh, Adam's going to get down that spiritualist. And that's all she wrote in that regard. The combo is there. Well, the combo's there, except he does need to turn it around. He needs to yep. invert the power and toughness. But at the same point, he has the combo. Now, Michael cannot kill either of those creatures. Yeah. They are untouchable without the likes of a journey in nowhere. Which is in the sideboard. At the same time, Michael has is drawing two cards a turn, thanks to Ephemerate. Yeah. And there's a spell stutter too. So spell stutter between the ephemery and the spell stutter and the counter spell. It's really gonna be hard for uh, Adam to start resolving those shadow rifts. It's not and even really shadow anything. It's anything. Like, no core skyfishers are coming down. Like, nothing's. No, I think and Michael's locked this game up. Yep, yeah, I think I think we're going to see. The winner of game one, pretty cleanly, pretty soon, pretty shortly here. What do we got? Oh, there's <laughs> one copy of Inside Out. So Adam probably holds it. No, he's just going to go for it. He's going all in. And looks like Michael is going for the spell starter sprite, and I think that's it. There's not much yeah. Adam can do here. <laughs> and there it is. Michael wins game one. So what are you trying to do here if you're Adam? You're trying to bring in more interaction, right? Absolutely. Interaction is how you win this. Because Michael is Michael's deck is literally interaction, the deck. So you want to be able to fight back and make sure your combo lands through as quickly as possible. Gonna have to step away for a second. I'm sorry about this, folks. So 
it looks like we are going to see from Michael's side, we got some dispels coming in. We've got some pyroblasts, standard bearer, and the journey to nowhere. And meanwhile, Adam is definitely messing around a little, quite a bit here with what he's got going on. So I'm very curious to see what we're going to have uh, happen here in this match or, in, you know, in this in these post cyborg games. Because, again, it really comes down to can Adam just go out really fast before uh, Michael can just take it over here? So. Let's have a look. Let's see. It does look like um, Adam is looking to take out some number of combo pieces just to kind of sure things up in other areas because that combo just isn't going to stick around for too long. So he's definitely going to be focusing probably a little bit more on like the core sky fishers and so on and so forth. But it's really interesting to note that um, Michael has taken out the screds and the screds would have actually done a tremendous amount in this, uh, in that game one, it got, it got pretty close. So I am running this solo. This is, I show now. No, it's not. Um, so Alex will be right back. Uh, his uh, sons uh, woke up, it sounds like. So as soon as he returns, uh, we will have him back here very shortly. But let's have a look-see at what we've got so far. We have Adam with an amazing hand. The combo pieces are all there, basically. It just needs an inside out. But Michael... Michael's got the journey to nowhere. Michael can handle pretty much whatever's going on from Adam's side of the field. So it's anybody's game here right now. Because even though Michael can deal with the uh, the creatures and the combo, he doesn't really have too much else on his end. So, ah, yes, that is correct. Uh, thank you in the chat for pointing that out. There is the, uh, the Tree Folk Umbra. I just... Uh, I forget that that gives a creature a door in the siege tower uh, sort of effect. So, uh, yeah, the combo's all here. Gang's all here. But that journey to nowhere is just going to put the hurt. Not immediately, but it is going to get there. It's, just, it's, a, it's a dang shame that we couldn't have seen uh, the spiritualist come down first. But I can totally understand why. We'd want to do, or why uh, Adam wants to do that, because he doesn't want to accidentally open it up to like any sort of removal spells or anything like that. But unfortunately, Journey to Nowhere just says, meh. <laughs> it is what it is. Brainstorm puts away Tree Folk Umbra. And Core Skyfisher. It, so uh, Core Skyfisher is on top of the deck. That's what was drawn. And then there is Tree Folk Umbra on the top of Adam's deck. Once again, he's being very careful, very cautious about playing the Spiritualist. Just because he doesn't want to run it out and then have it get you know blown up on the next turn or countered or what have you. He wants to be able to hold up stuff like the Dispel there to fight back. Uh. So we got a Brainstorm coming. Spell starts bright. So we're gonna have a little fight see. But nope, the spell starter is just going to take out that brainstorm clean and effectively. So no card draw for Adam. So Adam's just going to end up redrawing that uh, True Folk Umbra. And because he actually needed that card, that wasn't really going to get very far. And he has the combo, and it's on the field. But Jerry Nowhere is in that hand. So no matter what happens here... Adam's going to be in for a bad time. And Michael is quickly starting to take a spot between Spell Stutter Sprite, the Archaeomancer, uh, Ephemerate. That, that'll be a bit of a like a lock on these one-mana 
spells very shortly here. So personally, what I think might just end up happening here next is that I think we'll see a Terramorph Expanse look for probably a Plains, play Core Skyfisher, and replay Arkham's Astrolabe, depending on what draws we see, of course. But yes, at, uh, Michael's just getting it. <laughs> His draws are crazy. I love it. So we've got Skyfisher picking up Astrolabe and then replaying the island, or replaying the Astrolabe with the island. We got a basic, or are we just going for the Terramorphic? I think we would go for the Terramorph even if we saw an actual land. And there's another Arkham's Astrolabe. So we'll definitely be seeing another Astrolabe next turn, but that might just get hit by an Ephemerate. Especially now that we're going to have that Evolving Wilds going through. We're going to have an Ash Barrens very soon. So on and so forth. And there's even a Mountain, too. So now Michael can also threaten, uh, you know, or at least bluff a... Uh, like a kill spell, a scred, or something like that to deal with any of these creatures. And it's definitely going to put some pressure on Adam, but I think already, though, Adam's already feeling the pressure pretty, pretty strongly. But with Michael having a very long clock, it's only two damage to turn, after all, um, if he can even connect the two points of damage. Because of how long that clock is, it will take a little while for him to really uh, push through. So there is still a lot of time for Adam to come back here. But once you get some ephemerate Archaeomancer nonsense going on, it be very difficult. So it is still anybody's game. And it just come, it's going to come down to basically, can Adam lock up the combo. Can we get there? True Folk on Skyfish for four turn clock. It sure is. And then it looks exactly like what we're doing. So you're going to start forcing uh, some spell starter sprites. You're going to start forcing some mold drifter blocks. You're going to start forcing our, you know, the Archaeomancer Ephemerate nonsense. Hmm. Looks like Michael is just going in for some attacks, trying to get some damage through. So I'm not sure what I do here if I'm Michael. You could always go for the Moldrift, play Moldrifter, and then go for, you know, Ephemerate. And then on Ephemerate again on your next turn, and then play the Archaeomancer picks up Ephemerate again, and then you start your lock chain up. Uh, and you've drawn a considerable number of cards in the process. But it doesn't look like he wants to do that. It looks like he just wants to go for the Ash Bear, or for the Archaeomancer, and just have it on the board so we can just start going crazy with the combo. We got Arkham's Astrolabe coming in hot. We got some Shatter Rift action going on too. So no matter what, that that Skyfish is going to be getting in there for some damage, even though there is a dispel on Michael's side. I think it's definitely going to start. Coming in pretty hard here.
There's another tree folk umbra. That Skyfisher sure is not dying to any kind of removal anytime soon. And it gets uh, Michael down to six. And I think, unless Michael can draw some serious, serious gas right now. Yes, there is only one journey of nowhere in Michael's list. So what I think is going to happen is, oh, there's another spell starter sprite. I spoke too soon almost. So what we're going to see is we have the Spell Starter Sprite, we have uh, the Dispel, we have the Ephemerate. So Michael is basically sitting on three counter spells and will be able to deal with everything that Adam has. If Adam can draw into another Dispel, then it's pretty much game over. And at that point, we go into game number three. But it's just a forest, unfortunately. What's actually really interesting here is we may not have all... Yeah, it's over because of the, uh, the way... Michael went through here. Right. So what what actually could have happened is if Michael had kept back spell starter sprite could have spell stutter sprite with the ephemerate and made sure to get through. One way or another, you basically could have made it so that you would just do some blocking there. But yeah, it's over. Adam wins that one. So now we're all the way going into game number three. And let's see what happens. See what kind of action we got going on. And uh, hopefully we get Alex back here. Pretty nice and sane. It doesn't look like we have too much changing here. Looks like Adam's bringing in some uh, an extra echoing truth here. Yeah, this core combo is something else. I had never seen this before, and it is just, I mean, let me rephrase that. I have seen the core combo before outside of Popper. I've seen it like in EDH, to like as a means of like gaining infinite life or something. I've seen it as ways of just, you know, killing people and other things. And like Alex mentioned, it was basically a, uh, like a cephalid breakfast kind of deck back in the day. So it's really cool to see it like kind of find a new life, new home in the popper format, basically as a replacement for the inside out combo uh, once Gush left the format. So man, Neither of these is particularly great. Michael doesn't really have a whole lot of action here, though he does have a cantrip in the form of Arkham's Astrolabe. Adam, on the other hand, has one piece of the combo. Well, two if you include the Shadow Rift, but he's probably going to have to go in for the Brainstorm and hope that he finds something. But even then, he may not find anything at all. So... It's definitely a bit of a risk and a bit of a slower start for kind of both of our players here. So I'm very interested to see what happens at this point. There's another ephemerate, but that's not really gonna do very much. So we're just gonna see brainstorm and brainstorm. And Adam does not brainstorm, 
doesn't want to get accidentally blown out by a counter spell or a spell or a spell starter sprite, what have you. Now that's... Michael brought in Hydra Blast. Why did Michael bring in Hydra Blast? Uh, Inside Out. There it is. Inside Out is a red card, and I very often forget that. Uh, at the time, Michael was not tapped out. Sure. Um, hmm. So Adam gets Arkham's Astrolabe, sees another land. That's another land coming right down. Uh, so you're he's probably holding up some counter magic. Probably gonna see. There's another brainstorm from uh, Michael. Yeah, exactly. Gaining infinite life is very much a real possibility with this core combo. So there's a lot of cool things, a lot of cool interactions, a lot of cool little things you could do with it. So definitely kind of anybody's game here. Michael's setting himself up really nice and good, but Adam's just really one piece away from getting there, and there's not going to be a whole lot that Michael can do of it short of holding up all the counter magic ever possible. Absolutely, that's exactly what I think. I think we're going to start to see um, pretty much what you're saying, uh, I call OCT. Uh, we're probably just going to see just Ephemerate is just going to eventually just start Locking people out. And Mike or and Adam decides to go for the cycle play, cycling a shadow rift on the uh Archaea Master that just entered the battlefield. So we're gonna see a brainstorm into a terramorphic expanse, shuffling away, doing a good fetch land impression, uh like we would see in Legacy. And there's another piece of the combo. So Adam is going to play this probably conservatively and not drop the combo pieces now um, because he doesn't know if uh, Michael took out any of the removal spells or not. So we'll just have to see what happens here, but that may actually kind of come back to hurt Adam because now Michael can just hold counter magic forever. We could literally see... Uh, like a counter spell, and then My Michael will just ephemerate it. What I would expect to see is counter spell, one of the combo pieces. Um, Adam tries to dispel back, and then Michael dispels back once again. And it's another core skyfisher. So there is a possibility that Adam uh, foregoes the combo a little bit here and more focuses in on going in on the core skyfisher beats, which is a very real possibility. Because we could just very well see Adam play uh, Arkham's Astrolabe and then play core skyfisher, picking up Arkham's Astrolabe once again and then replaying the Arkham's Astrolabe, drawing him extra cards. But he may not want to replay it so he can hold up Dispel, but that does also very much telegraph that he's kind of got some things going on in that hand.
And there's the standard bearer, too. If that standard bearer connects, it's game over. There's not really any way that, uh... Which will dispel. <laughs> but yeah, once that core Skyfisher lands, there's just not really going to be very many ways that, uh... Adam's going to be able to combo off and actually keep up here. Now, again, it's not... Uh, the combo kills aren't necessarily Adam's only way out here. Adam can just go in for the Skyfisher beats and try and get there. But between, like, all the other counter spells that are going on here and the removal of that, Michael does kind of have, even though he took out a bunch of the Screds and whatnot. Um, I don't know that Adam's going to get there. So, here. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to see Arkham's Astrolabe come down. And an Evolving Wilds hits. So what's going to happen now? Because Adam's clearly the beatdown. Adam's got, Adam has the beats right now. And what we may even just see very, very shortly is we may just see that Daru Spiritualist come down. And then... Adam can just keep blocking Michael forever, basically. There is a scred, though. And that will uh, mean that that poor Skyfisher is getting out of here. And what's more, Michael can just keep getting them back. And that's going to pose a huge problem for uh, Adam. At this point, between the Skyfit or between... Uh, standard bear between the scred lock with Archaeomancer and Ephemerate. I really feel pretty confident putting this in uh, Michael's favor currently. I'm sorry once again, everybody who was hoping for a little bit more commentary uh, between myself and Alex. Unfortunately, Alex has a one and a half year old child and he uh, seems to have woken up. So. Not much we can do about that, unfortunately, but we will try and get Alex back as quickly as possible and especially for as we close it out here. But yes, I do believe that it's going to take a little bit. I don't think Adam's going to give up without a fight, but I think, I think it's over. I think it's, it's going to be uh Michael taking it home. So what we can see here, Michael can go Counterspell. Adam will Pyroblast it. No? Michael let it resolve, which is interesting. Yeah, gut shots would have been great. Yeah, standard bearer is, gonna, is just an absolute house in this particular match. So I'm very excited to see 
if uh, Adam has any way that he can deal with this. I don't think he does. If I take a look at his sideboard here, there is Echoing Truth, so he may have been kind of preparing for that. And there it is. Speak of the devil. Uh, Echoing Truth can find a home hitting that uh, standard bearer. Picking it up and allowing Adam to go in there, but Michael is still just sitting on so much counter magic. It's ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. Just, Michael just kind of has it all here. It might not be... Again, Adam's not going to give it up immediately, but the writing's on the wall here as far as we can tell. As soon as Michael drops, like, the core sky fisher so, uh, and starts kind of going off, like, here's my beats, that, that that's going to be it. This game will not last that much longer. And at some point, just like us, Adam will see the uh, writing on the wall. And here we go, all in on these ephemerates. And Michael just continues to just draw all of the cards. Yeah, it is 103 here. So, me personally, I kind of hope that we finish this pretty soon here. I would like to, you know, we're, we're definitely all hurting for some sleep here. But I'll take, you know, I'll take it every day I'm here. I want to play magic, talk magic, have a good time with everybody because that's exactly what we're doing. We're here to celebrate Popper as a format and really show off just what what can be done. Format's amazing, and I'm really happy that we get to show it off uh, through uh, thanks to our great sponsors, CoolStuffInc.com and uh, Wizards of the Coast. And it's just fantastic. Don't forget, guys, if you guys want to check out CoolStuffInc.com, they do deliver anywhere in the world. And if you use a little promo code, PPL5, you get 5% off. So... Um, and yeah, it's just so much back and forth here, but there's just no way that Michael just doesn't win this. It just takes a little bit. Yeah. Unfortunately, the clock thing is, it's something we do try and keep in mind. But unfortunately here, there's not much we can do about that. <laughs> the game's already on, and if somebody ends up timing out, well, that's that's it. There won't be there will not be a fourth game. Yeah, well, uh, Michael is doing quite a lot of work. He's doing a lot more interactions where uh, Adams are a lot more simplistic. And there it is. So Adam saw the writing on the wall and 
just uh, conceded, gave the win to um, Adam or to Michael Bonday. So uh, that's going to be it. Michael just killed it tonight with his deck. And while unfortunately Alex has to step had to step away, Alex can't be here to send her, send everybody off with me. We're gonna have some crazy uh, matches going into these uh, finals. Michael is now qualified. Uh, Ricardo is now qualified. We also have both Brian Koval, Brian uh, Demars, obviously Adam Yurchek here, and uh, I'm trying to remember who it was last week. Can't remember off the top of my head. We had one player get there last week. Uh, Chris Van Meter, I believe, was the one. So we've got a whole bunch of people. We need to uh, figure out exactly the little bits of math. We need to figure out and set things up. We will uh, be posting standings at some point, probably through Twitter and uh, also as an article on CoolStuffInc.com next Wednesday. Uh, when I cover another recap and we'll have everything kind of laid out there and worked out. And I can't wait. We've got week one of the playoffs next Thursday. And then we have our final uh, week, the week after that. I'm excited. I can't wait. And really this whole, uh, this whole league has been such a great time and it's been just a fantastic opportunity to be here with all of you. So on behalf of myself, Alex and everybody else tonight, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you soon. Have a great night.